Now, following the success of the Kia Telluride, the brand new 2021 Kia Sorento has some pretty big shoes to fill. Given its price point, this might be the first product, first time, or even repeat Kia customers might encounter when they get to a dealership. To test just how well this new Kia manages to fill that role, MotorOne.com has decided to make this exact crossover part of our long-term testing fleet, where we'll be having it for a few months. Now, I've been living with this exact Sorento here in Miami as my daily driver, and I'm going to tell you what it's like to drive and live with. But before we do any of that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay up to date with the latest news, reviews, and video coverage of your favorite car. The first thing you'll notice about this all new 2021 Kia Sorento is just how different it looks from the previous generation. Gone is the bulbous and safe styling of old. Instead, we get a sharpened aesthetic that more closely resembles the edgy styling of most modern Kias such as the K5 and the Telluride. Admittedly, it's tough to stand out in this segment, with most contenders having a fairly similar shape. However, the Sorento's clever details throughout help set it apart. Inside, it's pretty much the same story. If I covered the badge on the steering wheel and just showed you the fully digital instrument cluster, diamond stitch leather seats, and sleek interior design, it's not a stretch to say that the Sorento is punching well into the luxury crossover territory. Additionally, the interior is filled with tons of optional and standard tech that genuinely help you navigate crowded city environments with ease. Now, if that sounds a bit expensive, that's because it kind of is. See, Kia sent us the top SX Prestige trim level with the X-Line package and all-wheel drive, which puts this crossover at just over $45,000 as tested. However, keep in mind that the base Sorento with no options on it starts at just under $30,000. So there's definitely a pretty widespread of which version of the Sorento is probably right for you. Now, ever since I got into our 2021 Kia Sorento tester, I immediately noticed that this is a massive leap forward over the previous generation. Now, granted, you're still getting plenty of cheap little plastics throughout, but that's kind of expected at this price point and at this end of the segment, so no alarms there. However, Kia has done a fantastic job with materials on the dash, such as this like faux wood and the tan leather seats to really brighten up the cabin and make it feel a little bit more dynamic. Additionally, the addition of these colors makes it also feel a little bit premium too. Now I'm talking to you from a set of 10 way adjustable front seats, uh, which are incredibly comfortable even on long journeys. And that adjustability means that anybody, regardless of height, weight, or just overall shape, will be able to get into the Sorento and very comfortable relatively quickly. Now, because this is an SX Prestige X-Line, the top, top, top of the model range, that means I get three-stage heating and cooling for these front seats. Now, the cooling I've been using extensively during my time with the Sorento, especially here in Miami where the temperatures are frankly disgustingly hot. So that's a very, very welcomed addition. Now, adding to that overall comfort is the Sorento's ride, which is incredibly good given the segment and the price point. Because the, what I like about the suspension is that it isn't easily upset by potholes or imperfections on the road. It delivers a smooth ride regardless of what kind of road you're currently driving on. Now, on top of that, the Sorento does a great job of mitigating wind and road noise, something previous generations certainly didn't do as well, and it makes the new one feel far more premium. And I feel like having that good insulation, that separation from the outside world is what truly makes a car feel luxurious because you're able to just kind of sit back and relax. Now, if you opt for the standard version of the Sorento, you're gonna be getting a naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder engine with 191 horsepower. How Ever. As I mentioned earlier, this is a top SX Prestige X-Line with all the bells and whistles, which means you also get the larger 2.5 liter turbocharged engine, which delivers 281 horsepower and 311 pounds feet of torque. Now, this particular tester also has all wheel drive and an eight speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Now, perhaps the most important part of that power output is the fact that the torque figure comes in at 1600 RPM, which means that the Sorento feels quick off the line and while you're already at speed. Now, as you might expect from a turbocharged engine, there is a little bit of turbo lag. However, once the turbo spools up and you get going, the eight-speed dual clutch transmission does a great use of the available power we have. And frankly, it makes the Sorento feel quick, a lot quicker than I was expecting. 
Now, if you're wondering why anybody would get the fast version of a Sorento, it's for situations just like the one I'm in right now. I'm driving across Miami, a very crowded city, and having all that torque means that you can exploit little gaps in traffic because the Sorento really does a good job of picking up speed, especially with that dual clutch automatic transmission. Now, Kia claims that the top trim engine uh, in the Sorento consumes an average of 21 miles to the gallon in the city and 28 miles to the gallon on the highway for a combined average of 24 miles to the gallon. However, in my testing, I haven't really been able to reach that average figure. In fact, I'm looking at it right now. I've averaged 20.7 miles to the gallon, and that includes commuting to and from work on the highway, as well as a little bit of city driving uh, when I get closer to home. So if you're gonna want to reach that average figure, you're gonna have to have a pretty light and considerate foot on the road. Regardless of which version of the Sorento you opt for, you're getting a tremendous amount of safety tech. This includes forward collision avoidance, driver attention warning, lane departure warning, lane keeping assist, and lane following assist to name a few. However, you can have additional items such as blind spot monitoring, highway driving assist, and smart cruise control. Now, out of all the highway driving assist systems I've ever used, Kia's is one of the very best. So I have a little button on the steering wheel with a little steering wheel on it. I click it and then a green steering wheel pops up in front of me. And now I have the highway driving assist system engaged. Now, again, it's not a hands-free system. It's not for you to just kind of like you know, wander off and, and not pay attention to driving anymore, but it does a great job of keeping you on the lane in case you happen to get distracted. Something that's very, very useful when you're traveling long distances on the highway. And what I like about it is that it does little subtle inputs. It doesn't just sort of ping pong you in the lane and make it very difficult and sort of jarring. It's actually very smooth and it feels sort of very natural and it kind of hides in the background, only steps in to help you when you need it, which I think is a really, really good implementation of a system like that. As you might imagine, both the 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster and the 10.25 inch exist as optional extras, both of which are worth every single penny, starting with the infotainment screen, which features a wide aspect ratio that allows it to display multiple items simultaneously. Unfortunately, neither Apple CarPlay nor Android Auto makes full use of the screen itself, a definite missed opportunity. Regardless, both screens have vibrant colors and do a great job of displaying data without being distracting. Now, since this is a family crossover, we should talk about space because the Sorento comes standard with three rows of seating. Uh, however, the second row, you can opt to have uh, two captain's chairs instead of the traditional three seat layout. And something I prefer, frankly, if you don't need that extra seat, the captain's chairs give you easy access to the third row. And I think they just look nicer in general. With all the seats up, you're looking at 12.6 cubic feet of space behind the third row. Fold them and you get a respectable 38.5 cubic feet. With the second row folded, you've got a total space of 75.5 cubic feet, about average for this crossover segment. Thanks to its size, getting in and out of the Sorento is a breeze. Additionally, there's plenty of headroom for tall adults in the second row. However, keep in mind that the third row will be pretty cramped, not only because of its tiny 29.6 inches of legroom, but also because of the tiny rear windows. Now, in case it isn't totally obvious, the 2021 Kia Sorento is a fantastic daily driver. From its updated looks, the premium cabin, and the surprising amount of performance, the Sorento has far more strength than it does weaknesses. Now, even at an as-tested price of $45,000, this Sorento manages to offer tremendous value, undercutting some of its competitors when optioned to the same level. So if you wanna keep up to date with all the testing we'll be doing with the Sorento over the next few months, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. And if you wanna see more coverage of the Sorento and all of its competitors, make sure to head over to motorone.com.